And Des Moines restaurant industry is evolving. It, it's had to. It has a new concept, though, that seems to be working, and maybe it's got some legs for the future. Call it a ghost kitchen. WHO 13's Taylor Musgrove joins us live this morning to explain what a ghost kitchen is and how they've been working for restaurants. Good morning, Taylor. Good morning, Andy. They're not as spooky as people may think. Now, ghost kitchens are those restaurants who strictly do delivery and carry out or restaurants who do dedicate a portion of their kitchen to strictly doing carry out with a different menu. Now, Zombie Burgers tried out a ghost kitchen this winter selling Japanese cuisine, and they said it was confusing for people at first, but Iowans eventually came around. Some of the delivery drivers weren't really sure where they were supposed to be going. But you know, as as it went on, and after about a month or so, everyone sort of got used to the idea, and they they know the quality of the food that we're producing for Zombie Burger. So, doing it for something else, we're using the same quality in the same time and the same care, and just different cuisine. For the spring and summer months, Zombie Burger will operate a new ghost kitchen called the Strip Club, which specializes in chicken strips. The Strip Club will be available on third party apps and for carry out at Zombie Burger starting next Wednesday. Jessica Dunker with the Iowa Restaurant Association says the allure of ghost restaurants for new owners is the cost, since they don't have to provide the dining experience. And for existing businesses, it allows owners to use the same kitchen, staff, and resources to gain a Second stream of revenue. Dunker says ghost kitchens were gaining traction well before the pandemic to keep up with third party apps. But COVID has accelerated the industry's move in that direction, with ghost kitchens expected to be a multi trillion dollar industry by 2030. We actually foresee people uh, setting up ghost kitchens where they might run four or five concepts out of a single kitchen and they might be doing Japanese and Italian and Somalian and really creating the to-go variety in ways that we never uh, imagined. Now, Dunker says that as the restaurant industry starts to normalize, they're in need for more workers. Now, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, many were just working with skeleton, skeleton crews because they weren't able to open at full capacity. But now that they're opening at 100 percent, they need more employees. So we'll definitely start to see some more now hiring signs at local restaurants, Andy. And you're going to see some of these restaurants kind of have to make a decision about what to, to do here because uh, they, they've gone in the, some of these new directions and some of those have worked. But if they want to go back to their old restaurant, well, then they're going to need twice as many employees. They're going to have to grow a little bit more. But uh, some of this stuff is kind of interesting to just see how uh, much ingenuity that the restaurants have shown in this time. Thank you, Taylor.